hello! It's my birthday today! Well, it will be when this video is released. And so, as a birthday treat, I thought I'd get myself a new art supply. You know I couldn't help myself. And I decided to get some brand new inks by Montmartre. Let me show you them. They've only just released these, and so I thought I'd pick them up and see what they're like. My birthday's as good a time as any other. Let's get into it! October is also Inktober. I'm not actually doing Inktober, but I thought I would at least get some inks and do one ink video during this month so that I can have a nod to it. So Montmartre is an Australian company, and originally they had products that were mostly for children or beginners, you know, pretty low quality items. But in the last few years, they've really upped their game, and they've been releasing a lot of supplies that are designed for more professional art, or at least enthusiasts so the quality of their products has increased dramatically and they have signature ranges or in this case premium so I'm really hoping that these are actually going to be decent quality on the back of this one we've got fluoro yellow orange red green blue and purple and it even shows a little star rating on here I think that open circle means that they're transparent and apparently they are two star light fast rating fluoros are just not known for being light fast the fluorescent dye will always fade so I'm fully expecting these to not be light fast but let's check out the other ones because over here we've got some star ratings on all of these colors there's one two star which is this orange and then everything else is three star which I'm guessing is the most light fastness and it even has the pigment numbers which I'm quite impressed about so let's get the packaging open that's a bit better now I don't know how widely available these inks are yet because Montmartre I think only released them it was either late August or sometime in September so they're really new but I bought these in Melbourne at the Art Shed I will link them down below the Art Shed carries pretty much everything by Montmartre so they're a really great place if you're in Australia to buy online if you want to try some Montmartre items if I can see these anywhere overseas I will link them for you as well there <laughs> let's take a closer look I'll pick the scarlet because I always have to choose red. They are 20 ml bottles, so they're quite small. A lot of other inks tend to be around the 30 to 60 ml range, so they are fairly small bottles of ink, but ink usually does last a relatively long time. And there's a little bit of information on the back. What I will do is rule out a sheet in my sketchbook and we'll swatch all of the colours and take a closer look at them. I'll just lift this up so you can have a quick look at the names on them all. And let's get into swatching. Oh, and one other thing just before I forget, I did buy something else. It's for a possible project. I don't know if it's going to happen yet. If it does, I will show you them. But I also bought a fluoro acrylic paint set because I have some fluoro oil paints, but no acrylic paints in fluoro. And I thought this would be fun for a particular project. So watch this space. It may or may not happen if I get the time. By the end of this month, I'm really hoping to show you some of these. We'll see. <laughs> I'd ruled up a lovely swatch chart in my Hannah Mueller sketchbook, you know, the really expensive one that I've been using with cotton, and I'd even put a little black square in for the white ink, and that started off quite well. I was painting it out with no issues until I started dripping the ink onto the white paper with a bit of water to make it run. It seemed okay, but can you see very slightly in the middle there's a circle forming, and that's because the ink has actually soaked into the paper. I didn't notice this for a little while, but by the time I did, I was too far into it to really stop, so I just finished off this line, and the colours look very bright and lovely in the paper, but you're going to see what the big problem is in just a moment. Oh, well, this is great. We've got a situation going on here. I just flipped back to the previous page, and it's ruined my picture. Look. It's soaked through. Ah. I'm so annoyed about that. All right, I'm going to finish swatching them in here, but I don't think I'm going to add any more water to the paper before I put the inks down. I'm just going to put the inks down straight. That was an even worse idea because without the water barrier, the ink just went straight into the paper and it would not budge. Oh gosh, what am I going to do? It's just a disaster. 
So I ended up switching to this canvas paper and I'm just going to have to stick something over the top of that half done swatch because there's no way I'm using that sketchbook again with this acrylic ink. It just soaks into the paper, it doesn't work at all, but this paper says oil and acrylics, so I'm pretty confident about this. I also had this cute little cat stamp that I'd found in a Japanese twee store, mint my desk if I'm not mistaken, and I thought I would use this for my swatches rather than ruling something up because I was pretty much over it already and I hadn't even started doing this video properly. This worked out really well and it was so easy just to put that stamp down. So let's start again from the beginning, firstly with the white one, though I didn't bother with any black paper this time, and then moving on to cadmium yellow, this is a really lovely bright yellow, and you go to get shots of my arm because I had the ink bottles above the paper, but some of them are very transparent and then a few others are quite opaque. That sap green, when I get to that, that's a really opaque one, as is the black as well, I'm not too sure about the yellow ochre maybe. But one thing I noticed that this set is sorely missing is a magenta. I don't understand why there's no magenta in there. Is it because it's not a light fast color? I don't know, but while the scarlet is a really beautiful red, it's tending too far to the warm or orange side of things, and there really isn't a cool red in here. I can't even mix one because that warm red just won't mix enough with the phthalo blue to get a magenta, at least to the color I want. I tried mixing it with violet and it just ended up being red violet and not the lovely pinky color I wanted. I also mixed the red and white together. It didn't make the pink color that I wanted either. <laughs> Very annoying. I do like that dark sap green though and I'm always happy when there is a dark green in a set. The other colors are nice and they're quite bright. I don't think these are the highest quality inks I've ever used when it comes to acrylic inks. Though the black is lovely and opaque as you can see here. I do love these fluoro colors. I thought these were a set worth getting, even though I think they work out to be more expensive per bottle than the regular colour set. I paid $20 for the fluoro set and I think it was $33 for the 12 colour set in Australian dollars. So I think they are reasonably priced because other acrylic ink sets out there are way more expensive than that, at least $70 to $100, sometimes even more. Honestly, prices in Australia are just ridiculous at the moment. So this is a decent budget buy, I think. And here they all are once they're dried. I made quite a mess of these little swatch cats because, as I said, some of them are transparent so you can see the cat through the paint and then other ones you can't see it at all and they just look like random blobs. Oh, I wasn't doing very well with this video. It was a bit of a comedy of errors just trying to get these stupid swatches. But one thing I did read on the package is that the fluoros glow in the dark under UV light. At least four of them do. The purple and blue do not, unfortunately. But the yellow, orange, red and green do. And they look pretty awesome, so I was trying to think of a way that I can use them in a painting. And they will come into play a bit later in the video. So I drew my picture out in pencil on another sheet of this canvas paper. And I actually used a couple of different references to make a composite image. These are AI pictures that I found because they are really starting to pop up everywhere, especially on places like Pixabay. And they are entirely copyright free because there are no laws yet for them. Oh yes, and I also bought a tube of black acrylic paint because I mentioned in an earlier video that I have hardly any in my collection, so I thought I'd try out the Montmartre acrylic paint. And because I have some neon inks, I thought I might as well paint the background black. So here I am getting into the painting, starting off with that black background. Now, I could have gone with black paper and done the painting from that, but the trouble is that some of those inks are really transparent and so it wouldn't show up very well on black paper, whereas it shows up much better on the white. So it's just easier to go around the edges with the black and then keep the rest of the painting actually on the white paper. Oh, this painting, it's supposed to be a cutesy kitten with a birthday cake because I just thought I would do something birthday related. It ended up being so ridiculous. The thing I've noticed with AI images is that they look really fake because usually they're just too perfect. So for realistic paintings, I would still suggest using proper photographs because it looks a lot more natural. But for things that are whimsical, magical, fantasy, AI images are pretty fun to use as references because they create some weird and wonderful things. And as I said, there are no copyright laws yet for AI. Basically because it's not a human making it, you can't really copyright it. I mean, a human can type in the words 
cute magical rainbow kitten and AI will generate something like this but you still I don't think can claim copyright on that because you've just typed in words the machines doing all of the art generation it's just such a strange thing and I don't think I like it very much but at the same time I'm starting to understand that this technology is not going away so we may as well embrace it and find a way to use it as artists so I thought I'd have a bit of fun with it today and anyway I'm the birthday girl I get to make the choices today <laughs> I really wished here that I had magenta because the red doesn't quite match with the other colors. I wanted it to be a cooler color painting and that red is way too warm. Magenta would have looked perfect but I worked with the colors that I had and I made a little pink for her nose which you can see what I mean that that's definitely not magenta. So I did the whole painting with regular inks and then later on I covered some of it with the fluoro inks. You'll see why at the end of this video they certainly made this whole painting interesting. The inks themselves are okay but they are a little bit patchy and I think it's because they're quite thin. Some other acrylic inks are a bit thicker and I think better quality so I'd consider the Montmartre inks to be maybe a mid-range level. For the price they're quite reasonable though I think. And if you want a fairly inexpensive set to do some experimentation with, this is a pretty decent set. I like the teal colour in here. I think that's one of my favourites. I painted the kitty's eyes with the teal. Ah, uh, this is such a mess. I don't even know what I was thinking. I just really wanted something that was rainbow, cutesy, and with a birthday cake. So I'm going to let you watch the rest of this and you can see what an insane creation I ended up making. You might want to wear your sunglasses. There's no subtlety with this one. Well that sure is something. I don't know. What do you think? Is it cute or hideous? I'm going to let you decide on that. I had fun painting it though. I do like how it's come out and the cake looks quite neat. The kitten is just ridiculously bright. But I had fun with the inks and I'm going to show you what it looks like with the blue light because it's pretty awesome. What I really love is the flame on the cake bring the light a bit closer you can see the glow that I put around on the black I think that's really neat and the little sprinkles have shown up quite well the dots on the back some of them are better than others some of them for some reason have little gaps in the middle I don't know if that was air bubbles or just the way the ink is dispersed check out his eyes <laughs> overall I'm pretty impressed with how the neon ones have come out those I think are my favorites I'm really glad I bought the set so overall the inks are okay I wouldn't say they're the best acrylic inks out there by any means there are ones which are much better but they're not terrible and the colors are nice and bright I didn't use very much black ink because I was using the paint and incidentally this paint is really good I'm super impressed by this I really do like these neon inks but do bear in mind that only these 
these four glow in the dark, the blue and the purple do not. Otherwise they are quite pretty and they add some fun effects onto paintings, especially if you go onto black and kind of paint them translucently. You can't really see them in regular light, but when you shine the UV light on them they just come to life. And that's given me an idea for another project which I'm planning to do. That's the one I'm hoping to use the neon acrylic paints with. Maybe I'll even use some of the inks as well. Don't use these acrylic inks on watercolour paper, that's all I have to say. Use it on some kind of canvas paper and I don't know how other papers are going to go. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. This painting has turned out ridiculously twee. I have been exploring AI a little bit just because there's no avoiding it, so I might as well embrace it to some extent. In the meantime, here's a couple of other videos you might want to watch, and I'm going to go and have some birthday cake. So I hope you're having a great day out there. I'll see you all again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye!